Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I wanna help you with your wide forehand and more specifically, your wide forehand footwork. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna show you my training session because this is something that I'm working on with my left hand. Now, I'm naturally a right-handed player, but I'm relearning to play left-handed and my goal is to become a 5.0 player. The open stance forehand was something that I really struggled with at the start because as a right-hander, I hit a single-handed backhand. So I wasn't very used to hitting that from an open stance because it just wasn't done when I was younger. So when I started learning this left-handed forehand, the open stance forehand was especially difficult. I'm starting to make progress. So now I'm working on being able to deal with it on wider balls. So my opponents hit a good ball, they've pushed me out wide. I'm trying to get behind the ball quickly and return the, back ball, return the ball back cross court to kind of stay in the rally. So that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to break down the movement to the ball. I'm going to break down the footwork I use as I make contact with the ball. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about the practice structure and the drills that I've chosen to help you understand how you can kind of implement it within your practice. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. And make sure you get the notifications turned on because there's so much content these days. Without those notifications, you might miss out on one of my videos that's really helpful for you. So let's start by looking at the movement of the ball. We've got three parts to this. We've got the split step, we've got the first step, which is gonna be a drop step, and then we've got a crossover step, which I'm gonna be using to move out to the ball. So in terms of the split step, I'm gonna be normally thinking about landing that just after my opponent makes contact, so then I can react more quickly. Obviously, I'm using a ball machine, so I can't do that part, but I am gonna focus on trying to maintain a nice wide landing so I've got a stable base, which would allow me to push off in either direction. It's also gonna allow me to bring that foot underneath with the drop step and create this shin angle, so now that I can drive force into the ground to help accelerate me out to the wide ball. And then the movement to the ball is the crossover step. So drop step where the ball of the foot lands underneath the hip, and then a crossover step where this right leg crosses over in front of me. And if I do that well enough, I'm gonna be able to get out to that wide ball with one step, and then hopefully I can arrive in a balanced position ready to hit my shot. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's have a look at the movement of the ball at regular speed first, and then we'll break it down in slow motion. Start to become aware of the split step, so landing nice and wide, the drop step where I bring that left leg underneath me. Obviously, as a right-handed player, you're gonna be bringing the right leg underneath you, and then looking at the crossover step. I also want you to notice that it's a little bit different every time. Although we've got those three pieces, we've got the split step, we've got the drop step, and we've got the crossover step, depending on exactly where the ball is and how quickly I recover the split step might look slightly different the drop step is going to be a slightly different angle at the shin and again the way I do the crossover step is going to vary slightly dependent on the ball let's look at a couple in slow motion now on this first one the ball's a little bit closer so obviously we've got the split step but what I want you to notice is that the angle of my shin isn't quite as pronounced so the drop steps not as aggressive and then the same with the crossover step I'm not driving quite as hard across my body because the ball's closer whereas on this second one that shin angle is much more aggressive so the drop step I have to bring the foot underneath me more and then I have to drive much harder across myself on the crossover step to cover the ground Looking at things on the side, you can see the split step a little bit better, kind of the angle of the body and the shins that are allowing me to load and push off. And then you can see with that drop step, I drop my foot under and point my foot in the direction that I'm traveling. And then if we look at things from in front, again, you can see the drop step. It lands underneath my hip on the ball of my foot. There's the crossover step loading into the shot. So now that you understand the movements of the ball, let's talk about the footwork as I make contact. Now. What I'm trying to do is a mogul step. There was a little bit of variation because sometimes I arrived at the ball sooner, but most of the time I was doing something called a mogul step. So a mogul step is when you're loading off your outside leg. So as a right-hander, I'm gonna be loading off my right leg. With the left-hander, I'm loading on this left leg because it's all gonna be about driving through that left hip to initiate the forward swing but then something has to happen to the pelvis and the legs. And because I'm moving out to the wide ball, my momentum is going that way. I'm driving through this hip to throw the racket. And what you'll see is my right leg comes across. So I drive through, my right leg comes across and basically takes the place of where my left leg was. And then my left leg comes around and I land on the outside. So it looks a little bit like that loading off that left leg and doing the mogul step. 
Let's watch those same two shots that we saw before so you can see kind of the difference in loading, but you can see I step across here, load on the left leg. I'm now driving through that left leg, throwing my pelvis forwards. The right leg comes across a little bit and takes place of the left leg. And then this one, now I'm moving more aggressively to the ball. Now you're gonna see it looks slightly different. Again, I'm loading off that left leg, but the right leg comes across a lot more just because I'm moving faster in that direction. Looking at this one to the front, we can see I'm doing the drop step there, stepping across my body. Here, I'm moving into the loading on that left leg, ready to throw it forward and initiate the swing. And then the right leg comes across, basically replaces the left, and then I land and recover. This second one's a little bit closer, so notice how it doesn't end up being a full mogul step. It's more of a two-legged pivot because I'm not having to cover as much ground during the contact phase. Okay, so we've looked at the movements of the ball, we've looked at the footwork that we use on contact, and in a moment I want to talk about the drill progression that I used during the training session. But I want to mention a couple of things first. The first one's going to be how you actually practice this stuff, because it's unlikely that you'll, you, you'll be able to watch this video and go and implement this immediately when you play. You want to start by working on this stuff off the court and probably with your racket down as well. So when I first started working on this left-handed, I didn't just come out here with a ball machine. I literally had to spend time thinking about, okay, what does it feel like to do that? So I'm driving off my left leg. I'm trying to rotate my pelvis around and I had to practice the movement over and over again. You know, as a right-handed player, I've done this a million times because I grew up playing tennis. But with my left hand, this was a very new pattern for me. So I had to go through the different stages of learning. And you're gonna have to do the same. Achieve a certain number of repetitions and hopefully it's gonna become an automatic thing. You'll basically turn it into a habit. And when you get to that point, then you'll be able to draw on these movement patterns naturally during a match. The second thing I want to talk about is there are, you know, specific tennis athletic requirements that you need in order to be able to recognize the ball quickly enough in order to be able to use these footwork patterns. And that's the thing that I actually help tennis players with. I do talk about the technique and the tactics and stuff like that, but the big thing that I work with players on is helping them to train their vision so they can react faster and they can predict where the ball's going so they can set up in the right position. And I teach players how to improve their coordination so they can kind of make the technical adjustments that they need to make. If you're interested in learning about that, I've got a free class that's gonna teach you about brain training for tennis. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down there so you can check it out. But now what I wanna do is kind of talk about the practice structure and how I kind of progress things as I went through my training session. The key to improving your technique is to make sure your practice is structured in the right way. If what you're doing is too easy, you're not gonna learn, it's not gonna transfer into a match, and if it's too hard, you're basically gonna reinforce bad habits. So you have gotta try and make sure that it's at the right level. Here, I'm just working on a simple drill. A cross-court ball, I'm aiming at targets, I've only got one thing to think about, and I'm doing about 10 repetition, repetitions each time, and then taking a rest. For the second drill progression, I'm just increasing the challenge slightly. So I'm still feeding myself the same ball over and over again, but now I'm going three cross court and one down the line. The reason for this is now there's that extra little thing to think about that increases what I've got to focus on. So now I've got to get the, the correct spacing and the correct timing when I'm going down the line as well as cross court. So not much of a change, but just enough to create challenge. Now again, I'm doing a relatively short number of reps. It's a fairly you know, fitness intensive drill. So I'm just going three cross court, one down the line, doing three rounds of that. So 12 balls total. For the third draw progression, I'm now using a variable feed. So instead of just dealing with that single ball that's going out wide, the machine is now feeding it into random positions. Sometimes they're out wide, and sometimes I'm having to move for this inside out forehand. Now I'm still focusing on the movement to the wide ball, and the inside out forehand is basically just acting as a distraction to kind of you know, make me think about something else. So then I've got to refocus on the movement to the wide ball, and that's where the progression comes in. Now what you can see here is my technique is starting to break down a little bit. So this is kind of really on the outer to limit of what I'm currently capable of doing. Potentially, if I'd have done this earlier on in the session when I was fresher, it might have been okay, but I definitely wouldn't want to progress it more than this at the moment. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've learned something. Now, if you are serious about improving your game, just want to remind you about the class that teaches you about brain-based training for tennis. It really does change what's possible. Now, I'm not going to claim it's for everyone because it takes a little bit of work off the court, but if you're willing to do that, you can drastically improve your tennis level regardless of what age you are and basically what level you're playing at because it's all about improving things like visual processing. And if you kind of think about the things that players struggle with on court, for most 
you know, intermediate adult players up to you know, reasonably high levels, kind of the 4.5, one of the biggest things that happens is people just prepare too slowly. And if you don't prepare in time, it throws everything else off. The next thing that tends to go wrong is people's kind of spacing. The footwork and the movements of the ball isn't quite right and they don't set up in the right position. Well, the reason that that stuff tends to happen is because people's visual systems can't predict where the ball's going. And then the next most common problem is gonna be timing. If you can't predict how far the ball is away and how fast it's traveling, it's really hard to start the swing at the right time. And if you don't have sufficient levels of coordination, then it's gonna be really hard to get the, you know, the right sequencing of body movements to use the kinetic chain in relation to the ball that you're dealing with. And then the final area where it goes wrong, is really not being able to track the ball properly, not being able to watch it onto your strings and players losing focus. And these are all things that can be dramatically changed with brain-based training. And that's the reason that I kind of make these videos to let you know about that stuff because it made such a big difference for my game. I know that it can do the same for you. So if you're interested, uh, I'll place the link up there and I'll place the link down there so you can check it out. If not, no problem, go away, practice this footwork and I look forward to seeing you next time.